So basically in this, if I say basically one more time. Okay. So during my downtime during this pandemic, I've been trying to figure out how to size grade. Size grading is basically creating multiple sizes or like upsizing a specific commercial pattern. A lot of patterns that come out right now don't go up to like a plus size or what we now conventionally call a plus size or anywhere just anywhere larger than of like basically what they categorize as like a size 22 which according to industry standards a 22 is a lot smaller than what an actual like 22 you would find in the store in a plus size store even in a straight size store 22 is still a lot smaller in patterns than what you would expect it to be. So I've been racking my brain, reading books, reading posts, reading everything I can possibly get my hands on and experimenting and trying to figure out the best way to size grade. And I'm going to show you in this video the two ways in which, the two ways, like you can't see this. Basically, I'm going to show you in this video the two ways in which I size grade and which one basically works best for me. And I hope this is really uh, gonna be informational for you, so keep watching. So before we get into sizing up your pattern, I want to go ahead and say a disclaimer. For anybody who is who has some kind of, I guess you would say body dysmorphia, or if anybody who has issues with looking at their measurements objectively, like for example, for myself, I know that for forever if I didn't fit into a size 14 in whatever store doesn't matter what it was it would make me have a complete and utter mental breakdown so if anybody has issues with being triggered about sizing and your measurements and just objectively looking at your weight I would suggest maybe waiting on this video because this is kind of what you have to do when you're sewing you have to actually look at your body and look at it for what it is and I would just suggest maybe if you're triggered by this maybe this isn't a good time or good video for you to watch that being said right now we're gonna look at the size range of the pattern that we're working on and it has I, I went ahead and I wrote down sizes from 16 to the highest size of the pattern is a 22 so normally what I do is I know because this is a skirt and I know that a measurement around my hips is a 52 because of my stomach. So if you're looking at this pattern, you can see that between each and every size is a two inch size pro progression. Whew, progression is a hard word to say. There's a two inch side progression between each one. So basically what I'm gonna do is show you how to come up with the next measurements for each size and that will help you figure out how many sizes up you need to go. And even if it, you don't have to just go up to 28, you can go up to like a 34 if you need to with your size range just so that you're able to figure out, okay, this is the size I need to be going to. This is how many sizes up I need to be making. So looking at this, it starts at a 38 at a 16. So at a 22, it's 44. So of course you would go 46. And then from here, it would probably be a 48 and then a 50. Those will be your inches for your bust that you need to be for your bust to fit into these specific sizes. And then you're gonna do the same thing with this one. So unfortunately, it is a little bit odd because it goes up to here and then it goes up to here, then it goes up three here. So I am just going to make a slight suggestion and maybe go up by like the bigger one because you would hate for it to be 39 and not fit so maybe having it be a 40 would be a better option later on you can actually size it down just in case like oh this doesn't fit you can make a pleat or you can always cut off the extra on the side so from here I would do 40 and then 43 then maybe 46 from here same thing this one goes by two so I would just do 48, 50, and 52. And these are of course all in inches. So as you can see from here, what I normally do is I know, okay, my hips are 52. So this would be my best bet for 
a size that would fit. So from the size 22, I would have to go up three. Now I could either keep that or, or should I keep that? It's a little, it's a little odd because with my, with my body, I have my lower stomach, which makes it a 52. But if I do like my roundabout hip, I'm right in between a 50 and a 52. And what I could technically do is make it at a 50 and then just alternate and spread the amount of space that I need for my stomach to be able to fit. Because sometimes, depending on how much ease the pattern has, a 52 can be a little bit big, but I would much rather it be too big and be able to size down than to have it be too small and then have to worry about, okay, I need to fi figure out where to put that extra space. So what I'll probably end up doing is going with a 28 and just upsizing it by that many. Okay, so this is the skirt pattern. I went ahead and I covered it with tracing paper. So I go ahead and trace the size that I need because this is a multi-size skirt and which means that basically there's three different types of like hems for different lengths of skirts and I don't want to just cut it and lose like the bigger size of the longer skirt just in case I want to come back later and make the longer skirt. So I went ahead and I'm going to trace it over so that, whew, well, I'm out of breath. Um, so yeah, so I'm going to go ahead and trace it so that I can have my own duplicate piece but still keep the original pattern intact. So basically what I like to do first is I like to make a line between all the little points here between each and every size to help make a guide for where the next two sizes where those the edge of those skirts I'm not quite sure what you call this the points for each of the other sizes you make a line to be able to put it so that basically you know that you're making it right so it's, it's a guideline basically oh girl look at my hair All right, so basically from here, you kind of see all of these reach across this line. So as you go to bigger size, it should, the each point for the bigger size should hit across this line. So basically what I like to do is there's actually two methods. There's the business card method and there's actually the method for measuring. So the business card method is basically you taking your time and going through. So like, so I made like, so you take your index card, it can be an index card, it could be a business card, whatever has four straight lines, that's all you need. So you take your time and you go through and you line up the edge of your business card with a size that's two sizes bigger than the biggest size. So between here, you know, okay, this spot here is on the size 18 and this is your size 20. So you mark on there, okay, this between this and this is two sizes. So you slide your way down that one, down the line, and then you meet at the 22, and you mark here, and you know, okay, that's gonna be my guideline for two sizes up, and this is going to be my 26. Easy, right? So you make more lines like this going throughout the pattern, and if you have like these two tips here, it's gonna basically be the same thing. You're just gonna measure from that tip to wherever the 22 fits, and then you're gonna slide down and make that dot here. The only thing I can say that's kind of not fun about the business card method is it's not exactly 100% accurate. It's actually a cheat way to do it. And I know that I learned it from, there was a lady that used to be on Blueprint slash Craftsy and she did it this way. I found out when I was making a kimono shirt that it wasn't, it didn't exactly help me well, actually, that had more to do with, like, me not understanding the mechanics of that shirt. But, I don't know. It doesn't always necessarily work. I'll insert some footage here. But, basically, that shirt, given it was wide enough, but it kind of falls into that category of things that's wrong with, like, the industry when you have something that's supposed to fit a straight size that doesn't take in consideration curves of a woman that's of a bigger size. So when I made it bigger, it just kind of just sat there and the proportions were all weird and like the sleeve gaped 
and I came to I have come to the conclusion that even though I made a video for it I'm not gonna put it out I'm just going to take I'm basically gonna try to make a block or like a shirt block out I'm basically gonna take the time to make a shirt block and to make the same kind of shirt but I'm gonna make it so that it's more or less more flattering for somebody of a bigger bust or for a bigger top size because I don't know about you, but I don't necessarily want people staring at my armpit or the side of my breast when I move turn, turn, turn when I turn to the side. It just wasn't flattering. So, a lot of times the business card version can be a lot less accurate, and that's why more recently I've tried to do method number two. Me method number two, which has to deal with measuring between each and every size, or like at least like the last two and then to go up. At least with that method, you can go up by each size instead of, for example, with that one, the lady only taught me how to do two sizes because she said, oh, it ends up different later. Well, I'd like to know how it is to go bigger. So the way that I've learned is to measure between each and every one of these. So let's say between these two sizes is a fourth of an inch. And this one here is, I don't know what goes up after that, like half an inch. So it's only good to assume that this might go up by like maybe like three eighths of an inch and kind of gradually go up with the measurement. At least that way you can have like a good even amount between each size. Now luckily for this skirt, it kind of goes up by the same amount between each and every size. So you only have to measure between that last two sizes to make sure they're similar or correct. And then kind of just go up by another size and be like, okay, this is one fourth. There's my 24. One fourth is my 26. Another fourth, there's my 28. So that's all you really have to do. I like this method a little more because at least it's a little more accurate. It's still not 100% like the greatest thing in the world, but I feel like if you're new to sewing and you're new to all of this, then this is an easy way to figure out how to upsize and then later on when you find start to having fit problems then you can figure out okay I need to take a little bit off the waist or a little bit off the hip I feel like this is just a lot easier to do so I'm gonna go ahead and figure out how far I want to go from here and then I'll come back to show you how to do up here so yeah so normally here is where I usually have the issue because I always feel like if this line goes across and this line here it always feels like this is such a short amount compared to how far it is here which I mean technically later when you make a muslin because I would assume you would make a muslin because something like this I would suggest making a muslin because you never really know like is it gonna fit did I take too much off did this take too much off you don't know but then also you have to realize a lot of this length that you miss between here like this little bit of like half an inch is actually going to be added to the bottom part of your skirt so it's not like you're missing much but it's always a good idea to make a muslin to make sure that it fits correctly because you don't want to go from here to making your out of your beauty making your skirt out of your beautiful fabric and then messing up so normally what I do from here is when you have if you have the distance between and yes I am going to use a card sometimes it works it really helps so if I know from one size is here and that's the other size and I'll go through and make sure okay that's a good size that's a good that's the correct measurement basically and then I'll go through and because I made it like three sizes over because I made it three sizes bigger I am going to actually make it to make a point and say okay that's where I'm hundred percent correct but that's where my 24 is gonna be make sure this is where my 26 is because I did that one already and then my 28 oh, looks like I didn't do far enough so normally it would work and it's fine I just me and curves don't get together so what's, what's gonna happen is I'll probably go back through then to make sure I measured across here correctly that's why I say make a muslin first because you don't want to mess up and mess up your beautiful fabric so so yeah but we'll just assume for this video's sake that this corner is correct all right so this is your new top your new corner for your skirt 
So what I normally do is I take it and I will take it, take my ruler. Use your words, Jacqueline. All right, take your ruler and basically just try to find like the best curve and that ends up fitting because when you go over, you have a curve that kind of blends. It blends across here. So you want to find one that basically blends in as close to as possible to this hodgepodge of lines. And then when you do that, you basically have your new waistline. And that's it. So I'm going to go ahead and once I put this camera back correctly and go ahead and do the best that I can do. Can you use that as an example? So now I'm going to blend through. I'll probably erase some spots and correct this. And basically, this is your new waistline. Okay, so I know whew, patterns all rubbed up. So basically, I know that right now at this spot right here is the size that I need. So what I like to do is in the same way that I made the line at the top, I like to make the lines across the points of both notion of both notches so that when I make this line I know okay the top should go should meet here so at both of these spots is where you're gonna put your notches so I'm just gonna go through and I know okay top is gonna meet here and this top is gonna meet here and I've transferred both of my notion my notches simple and like I was saying before even though you lose a little bit at the top you actually gain that amount back in length at the bottom so right about the same amount goes back to the bottom here so you don't really need to worry about it becoming too short at the side because you go ahead and you when you measure and you grade the bottom part it still ends up going out wider and longer so you should be fine the pattern that I'm using in this video is actually going to be part of another video because I like the skirt well I like the design of the skirt I haven't made it yet so this is basically me just size grading it for that video, but I felt like maybe I should better explain it. Yeah, before I get to like the actual skirt video. But yeah, this is the skirt that I'm gonna be working on. I like this one here. I feel like it's really pretty kind of on trend. So yeah, that's the one I'm gonna be working with in this video. And this skirt should come up in another video because I do plan to make it and I do plan to add it to my wardrobe in more colors and more patterns in the future. First of all, I want to say thank you guys for watching. Um, I hope that made sense. I apologize for my appearance. I just got off work and I realized when I went to sit down to edit this that I did not do any type of intro or outro and that's just not, that's not cool. That's not cool, man. Not cool. So I also want to say when you're measuring, it's easier to start with It'll, it'll make your life easier if you start with like a smaller measurement. So instead of like inches, go centimeters or millimeters. The smaller it is, the more accurate you're going to get. So when you're starting out, I would suggest starting with millimeters or centimeters. But yeah, I hope that makes sense. I plan to do more size grading in future videos and I'm going to basically show you whether or not it works. And yeah. <laughs> And I think I'm also going to be doing pants as well. That's on my list because I have a really cute pair of 1940s pants that I want to add to my wardrobe and where to work. And yeah, so I'll probably size grade another pants, another pair of pants, one pair of pant words. But yeah, I'll probably size grade a, a pair of pants and I'll use that as my block for the future for when I want to make different types of pants. And I know this block fits, so we'll also be going over blocks as well. There's a couple experiments I have coming up. So yeah, I'm pretty sure you're tired of hearing me say so. So I'm going to get out of here. <laughs> Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you learned something. If you have any questions, please leave them down below. I'll do my best to answer them. And if not, hopefully someone else will answer in a kind way. Um, please don't leave me up in the comments because I know I'm not a designer in any way, shape, or form. I'm just trying to help out people who have never done this before, who are just starting, and who are interested. So, anyways, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you guys later. Bye!